Next up, it's Movie Spotlight, our weekly segment reviewing the latest cinematic releases at the Korean box office and online. And we do that with the help of our panel of film critics. This week we have Jason Beshevais. Jason, hello. It's good to see you. Hello, Jaya. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And we also have Darcy Paquette with us as well. Hello, Darcy. Happy to be here. Okay, so today we'll just be reviewing one film and then having a bit of a Oscars wrap-up as well. So a little different from usual. This week, uh, the first film we have, uh, it's a local release. It's called Soulmate in both Korean and English. It features the popular star Kim Dami and Jeon so and it's a film about female friendship. Uh, the film opened in theatres on Wednesday and currently sits second at the box office. So Jason, can you start us off for us? Can you introduce this film? Yeah, sure. Um, it's basically a film, I mean, it's a really good film. Um, it follows two central characters, uh, two girls. Uh, we're introduced to one of the girls, uh, played by Kim Dami, or young woman. Uh, and then it basically, over the course of the film, we get to, to learn about the relationship between uh, these two girls. And it flashes back to Jeju Island in 1998. Uh, and we, you know, we as viewers, we learn more about them. They're basically they're, they're extremely close, um, but things happen that basically mean they essentially drift apart. Mm. Um, uh, they're also quite different characters as well. One of them is really outgoing, quite independent. As is a character played by Kim Dami. And then the character played by John Sunny, she's a little bit more kind of introverted. She she doesn't like getting on planes. She doesn't want to travel. Um, and uh, something happens because there's also a guy in the mix and there's a misunderstanding. And uh, yeah, it's essentially a film about, it's a coming of age film. Um, and it's directed by uh, Min Yong Gun, uh, who previously made um, the indie film We Encounter that was really well received in Busan 2010. So this, this is his commercial debut. Uh, and uh, Kim Dami, she's very much at the center of this film. Uh, she is a terrific actress. Uh, I'm sure listeners will be familiar with some of her work, Ito mm. One Class, of course, and The Witch Part One, which really kind of uh, put her in the spotlight. So, um, yeah, so in terms of the narrative, that's, that's pretty much all you need to know. Darcy, I understand the film is actually a remake of a popular Chinese film. Yeah, I mean, the, the original film is quite interesting as well, and it has an interesting backstory. There's a, an actor, director from Hong Kong uh, named Derek Tsang, and you know he made this movie Soulmate in 2016, which was based on a novel uh, by a Chinese writer uh, Annie Baobei, and it stars the actresses Zhao Dongyu and Sandra Ma. And I mean, one of the memorable things about this film, it was really well received. It did well at the box office, and then it received a bunch of nominations at the Golden Horse Awards, which are kind of the, you know, the biggest awards for Chinese language cinema. It's mm. based in Taiwan. And the jury couldn't decide which one to give the best actress prize to, and so gave it to both of them. Wow. Um, okay. I mean, it tells you something about the film because, you know, their, their roles are so intertwined and uh, the performances are so interlinked that, you know, to give it to one and not the other would just seems wrong. And, and so that was, uh, I mean, that was the dynamic on that original film. Uh, the director and the actress, Zhao Dong Yu, went on to make a movie, Better Days, which we reviewed on this show several years ago. Mm. Um, that was also a tremendous hit. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it comes, it's a very high profile film in the Chinese speaking world. And uh, so it's interesting that we get this Korean version of it. Uh, you know, remakes are a real trend in Korean cinema these days. We're seeing mm. a lot of them, and there are a number of different reasons for that. You know, in some ways, it may give filmmakers also a chance to make the kind of story that wouldn't get financed otherwise. I'm not sure if you took this story to big investors and said, right. you know, I want to make a film about, you know, this long-term friendship between two women. They might <laughs> kind of show you the door. <laughs> yeah. But in this case, you know, right. it's based on a very successful film. Right, so Jason, you've uh, given it away already a little bit, but you said it's a it's a good film, right? Yeah, I really liked it actually. Um, in terms of the structure, it's quite it's very similar to the original film, uh, but actually each scene or a lot of the scenes just play out quite differently, uh, and so it's quite subtle in the way it's different, and I really admire that. I really like the way Korean directors approach remakes. Mm. Um, we saw that with Confession uh, last year as well, Ditto. Um, and remember, of course, 
Um, and uh, you know, there's been a long tradition. There's Doorlock of all these, you know, films that have actually kind of they've breathed new life into the, to this kind of original material and done something a little bit new. And I think that's also true here. Um, they're, they're both distinctive films. Sure, structurally very, very similar, but at the same time, I think that they're, they're also quite different. I don't know if Darcy agrees with me on that, but uh, certainly very well crafted. Uh, it's beautiful to look at. The acting's terrific. Uh, I love the two leads, and um, yeah, no, I, I I really liked it. I was really engaged. It's quite long, but actually, uh, it kind of races by. A really two really interesting female characters. We don't get to see that a lot these days, mm. uh, although we are seeing more of it. But certainly not enough, you know, of these female centered films. And this, I think, really does shed uh, light on some of the you know the issues facing women. And uh, yeah, I give it my thumbs up. Okay, so Jason, there, thumbs up, Darcy. What about you? Yeah, I liked it as well. Um, I like that the film is able just to kind of focus on what's, I mean, a fairly simple story. I mean, it has some twists and turns, but um, you know, a lot of movies kind of feel this obligation to really try to, you know, twist up the story and make these surprises and to entertain you. Mm. And sometimes, you know, just feeling, <laughs> you can feel the film trying to be really entertaining and to tell a a complicated and exciting story and uh you know films don't always need that sometimes you can just have like a really simple story about two people right and uh you know this film it because it does just focus on that i think we do go kind of deeper into their relationship and um yeah i really enjoyed it as well right and how do you compare it to the original as well well, I don't know if the original is really, really good too. So. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're both good films. I saw them both this week, actually, on the same day. And right, they're, they're okay, both They're both very good, um, actually. I'm not sure which one I prefer. I think just because the original is so popular in Korea, I think, you know, there will be those who will sure. say whether the original is, is, is better. But uh, actually, I, th I think, uh, like I said earlier, they're, they're both quite unique in their own way. And that's what I liked about both of them. So generally a positive review from both our critics for Soulmate, which is out now in Korean cinemas. Now for the second part of our segment, uh, we wanted to briefly look back at the Oscars, Yay. which <laughs> took place last <laughs> Sunday. Uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once took home almost all of the top awards, including <laughs> Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Best mm. Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress. Uh, particularly notable among those uh, winners was Michelle Yeoh, who became the first Asian woman ever to win Best Actress. So, Dusty, any thoughts on the Oscars as a whole? How did you rate it as an event? Well, I think, first of all, I mean, I guess the first thing to say is that it felt comparatively normal for the first time in a long while. Mm. And, you know, after Parasite won in 2020, you know, the pandemic just kind of upended the ceremony and... You know, they tried to, to cope with it in different ways. And, you know, they brought in Steven Soderbergh that year to try to, you know, do something different with the Oscars. And it got mixed reception. And last year we thought we were returning to normal. And then Will Smith strode on stage. Right. And, and it's kind of upstaged the whole event. And so, yeah, I mean, this year I think people really appreciated the fact that it was kind of a familiar, traditional sort of Oscars. There were no really unexpected you know, shocking developments. Uh, the only thing that went over really badly was the decision to replace the red carpet with a champagne-colored carpet. Yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> Which, I don't know what it is. You know, in all the pictures, it looks like kind of dirty office carpeting or something. And <laughs> all the, the actors, their dresses are all washed out. And it, so right, okay. So universal that's, ban on the champagne carpet. But. Well, if that's the biggest <laughs> criticism, I guess it was a fairly successful <laughs> event this year then. But uh, perhaps they will bring back the red carpet next year. Uh, Jason, Everything, everywhere, all at once. It's quite extraordinary the number of awards it won. How significant was it to you, do you think, though? Because it is significant in so many ways, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, certainly for Asian uh, representation. The fact, actually, also that it's a genre movie, kind of similar to, to Parasite. And it premiered at South by Southwest Festival like almost a year before practically yeah a whole year before the festival so been around a while a kind of a wacky movie entertaining film this is not normally the movie that kind of voters go for 
Uh, and so it's significant uh, for that. And uh, I think in some ways it kind of followed the success of Parasite. Um, I think they really, I mean, you just look at the, you know, the entire cast and directors. So the directors are really young. Um, and I think it, it was reflecting, I, th I think, perhaps a shift in, in the Academy, uh, in the films they vote for. Mm. And I think the wider changes in the film industry, sure. I mean, Netflix have had their moment and they, they still did pretty well, all quiet on the Western front, did very well in the craft categories. Um, they still have yet to win Best Picture. And last year, of course, uh, it was Coda with Apple. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, if we have time, we'll talk about A24. I think we're seeing these smaller studios uh, doing very well at the Oscars. Uh, Neon is another one with Parasites. So uh, I think it was a very well-received ceremony, as, as Darcy mentioned, you know, back to normal. Um, and uh, but, but yeah, I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once is not a normal film. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a conventional movie. It's a very good film. Uh, but I think it's taking the Academy in a really interesting direction, and I'm up for that. And I think a lot of people are too. Yeah, it's a big win for relatively small independent film, right? Uh, as you said, uh, as Jason noted, this is another film by the distributor A24 as well, which has really been making waves in recent years. And in fact, at this year's Oscars as well, uh, The Whale uh, was yes. also from A24 yep. as yes. well. And uh, the best actor in that film went to, the best actor award went to Braden Fraser in that film as well. What do you think it says about filmmaking in the US these days? Well, I mean, it is um, it is very different than it used to be because, you know, the studios used to have these specialty divisions and it was sort of like they'd make their major films and then they'd have these divisions that would focus on, you know, kind of, I don't know, quality <laughs> entertainment or, you know, the kind of films that would get recognized at the Oscars. And, you know, I think probably it was, you know, Netflix and OTT coming in that kind of changed a lot of things. Um, in general, you know, the audience has been changing and tastes have been changing and, you know, not many people have known really what is going to work in the new, you know, the new era. And, mm. um, and A24, I get, you know, I'm not sure if they knew from the beginning that they would be able to do this, but they really kind of stepped into a, a space that, um, where there was an opening and, mm. uh, you know, they have great relationships with all the directors that they work with. Everybody admires A24 and wants to work with them. And, uh, so in that sense, they're, they're able to, uh, really turn out some interesting films. And, you know, it's been a while since we've had a, a company that has kind of its own brand that people trust. Mm. And I think there are a lot of viewers who, you know, if there's a new A24 film, even if they don't know the director, or they don't know very much about it, they're kind of interested to see it just because uh, the studio has such a good reputation. So that's great to see. And I hope that they continue making many, many films in the future. <laughs> Yes, well, it was certainly an Oscars to remember for all of the right reasons this year. OK, that is where we're going to have to end it today. Jason, Darcy, thank you as always for your reviews and thoughts as always. And we'll see you again next time. Yeah, have a great weekend. Take care.